Welcome to the Church Communications Podcast. I'm Katie Allred. And I'm Kenny Jang. We want to help you become a better church communicator. And this is the place we're going to talk about strategies and best practices for your church. Let's get started. Hey friends, it's that time again. It is Kenny Jang and Katie Allred for the Church Communications Podcast. I feel like I'm talking like um, Gary Vaynerchuk today, Katie. I can't get out of it. It is the Church... The Gary V. Church Gary V. Gary V. The Church Communications Podcast. Yes, podcast. We're glad to have everyone here. How are you doing today, K- Kenny? Um, it is a fantastic day. I am um, really amped up because this is one of those topics that we're going to talk about today that I just love nerding out. It's yeah, kind of like, me too. It's one of those things where um, it's so easy to win in this category mm-hmm. uh, because no one else is doing anything about it. Right. And so um, and what we're going to talk practical. about today, yeah, tell us what we're going to talk about today, Katie. We're going to talk about Google My Business, and we're also going to talk about local SEO. So if you are interested in how you can rank in search engines, this is for you. So if you're a new church, an old church, you haven't had a website a long time. Maybe you've had a website forever, but you're not on the first page of Google, or maybe you just want to beat all the other churches in town. Just kidding. We work together. But maybe you're like that other Mormon church it's not real no, I'm just I'm just kidding Mormon <laughs> um but maybe you're like the other churches down the street they're doing really great why can't we also be doing great we're going to tell you today how you can do better yeah so I mean right basic question what is the difference between um local search and regular organic search um right. why is local so important to actual churches yes and then introducing, I think, I think we're going to be introducing a lot of people to like the Google local pack and the Google My Business service. Um, yes. That hopefully is a phrase that you've heard before, but if not, it's okay. I think Katie's here to save the day. Um, and we're going to be talking about, right, again, I think everyone's always interested in those factors that impact local search rankings so that you can move your church up that, that ladder. Um, so yeah. at the end of the day, does your church show up in search results? I think that's a really big question. Last time, last episode, uh, Katie, you challenged everyone to hop over to Google and, and, and actually duck, duck, go and actually uh, search for churches near me or churches in city name. And so yeah, let's just start there. Um, local search. Um, what should we be talking about? What should we be thinking about, um, Katie? Okay, so local searches have an extremely high impact on church growth because they're performed by people who are located near enough to your church to actually visit you in person. And they're also performed by people who are both actively and explicitly looking for church typically. So local SEO is what makes your church accurately show in location based searches. So when you search for something like church near me, local church, church in your city, this city. Uh, so local SEO is what makes your church accurately show up in mapping apps. Okay, so that is typically also another place that people are searching for your church automatically, right? And so they might go to Google Maps and just be like church and just show everything in that surrounding radius. Okay, so it might just not be Google either. It might be Apple or Yelp, could be Waze. So how can we use Google's local pack so that we know how to affect that? So what's Google local pack? Kenny. Yeah, Google local. So this is like a little bit nerdy of a phrase. And I love like reading you in if you're listening today. Yeah. Basically, um, you do a Google search, right? And it's interpreted by Google what to what to serve up, right? And we call the, the first page, we call that SERPs, S-E-R-P, search engine results page, right? And so yep. what you want your uh, church to show up on the first SERP page, right? Um, and typically... Google wants to interpret it based on location if you are doing some geographic type of related search. So Google re- returns the set of results at the top of the page, which it, which it calls the local pack. Um, so when you're doing, especially when, um, for instance, when you're doing a search on Google Maps, right, the entirety of search results returned is driven from a local ranking algorithm. It's not a, like 
against, if you're searching for a pizza restaurant, pizzeria, you're not going to compete with, um, like my Jersey search is not going to bring up Alabama pizza, pizzerias, right? right? There's, there's this local pack that Google defines by geography that's relevant to where you are. And so that's why it's extremely, uh, extremely important to you know, dominate this local SEO. You got to break into that local pack. Um, that's basically what we're talking about. Okay. So what are these steps to first, let's talk about Google My Business. Okay. So Google My Business is a service provided by Google. So if you want to get into it, you can go to to literally just search for Google My Business. You can also go to google.com slash business, okay? And the first thing you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to claim your listing, okay? So if you have never claimed your church's listing, you need to claim it and then you need to verify it. And so there's a lot of different ways you can verify it. The Probably the easiest one is to make a phone call, but there's another one where you actually get like a, a postcard in the mail with a number on it. The phone call is preferable because it happens instantaneously pretty much. Um, and then after that, you can start customizing your Google listing that comes up when people search for your church. Yeah, that, that is, um, it sounds intimidating, but it is Google. It's very easy. It's very intuitive. They step you through it. You basically log in and, and it goes one step at a time to claim your listing. And then the power and the results and the impact that you have I think it's pretty amazing there. Um, so you want to claim it. You want to verify it, as Katie said. Um, I think that's something that's really important. The next thing I think, at, at least from my perspective, um, is the basic, uh, what we call, uh, someone recently said napkin information, but it's NAP, like the N-A-P, the, your name, address, and phone number. You need to make sure that data is correct. And there's actually a whole um, biz, cottage industry just opening up for verifying that because there's so many databases out there now mapping databases gps database uh, online database yellow page database the, there's so many things out there with your name address and phone number and right. those things change over time especially if you have multi-site multi-campuses um, mm -hmm. so you want to make sure that that stuff is up to date and correct because again that's going to affect when google includes you in the local pack for Google map searches for regular searches, et cetera. Yeah. And if your church maybe is meeting in a high school, we have a lot of these churches in the yeah. group that are meeting at a local school and they're like, how do I get Google my business when the listing is already claimed? So you can set up another listing. Typically what we've recommended in the past is to set up your, your listing as a suite number. So you might say we're suite B or something. And so you'll have a, a different address slightly, um, but then you're able to at least claim a, a listing in a way. Uh, that way you're not using the same school's address and that kind of stuff. So in that case, you're probably going to end up having to do verification via mail. And, and you might have to talk to the school's receptionist about getting that kind of information. But there's so many you know, ways that you can kind of get around it. So just make sure that, you know, you have this information correct, because if you don't, like people use this as their phone book. I use Google as my phone book all the time. If, I, if I'm looking for a phone number, I, I use Google. So we have to make sure we do that. Yeah. Okay, so the next step. Verification via, email, uh, via mail, Kate, I just want to um, like yeah, go ahead. the bar for everybody. It's just a postcard, right? They mail you a postcard right. at that location and they just want to make sure you're yeah. legitimate that you... And for them, right? If if you're able right. to receive a postcard at the address you say you're at and it has a code real. and you can put the code back into Google, then it confirms that, hey, yeah, I'm at that location. I receive mail. Mm -hmm. I'm legitimately, you know, at that location. So um, I love that. I've never heard of that sweet number or, uh, you know, department number uh, trick before, but that's a great, great idea, Katie. Yeah, it's just a tiny little trick that I picked up in the group. A lot of people have done that in the past when it hasn't worked for them. And I do kind of hate that there's no other way around it, but that is our kind of our workaround. So, okay. So the next step is to use the most specific primary category possible. Oh, yeah. This is confusing to some, right? Right. So you could put church, I think, but you can, if your organization is a Baptist church, you can actually choose Baptist church. 
So they even have, you, you know, can, they, you know, what I found recently they even have non-denominational. So yeah, they even have that, that versus far. a generic church. Right. Um, you can include more generic categories such as church or Christian church, but you can say non-denominational church or you can say Baptist church. Uh, I don't know if this is possible for every single denomination or not, but just try when you're like setting up those primary categories, just see if there is Presbyterian church, just because it will help you with your SEO. As people are lurking, looking for churches, more than likely they might be typing in United Methodist Church or Presbyterian or Episcopalian, um, just because that's what they're familiar with. So it it just helps to make sure you're setting the most pri uh, the most specific primary category. Yeah, that's a very very good tip. You want to be as specific as possible. That right. that's available. Uh, what else What else do we have to make sure is set up correctly? Okay, so hours of operation, Kenny. <laughs> what do you do there? So this is this is interesting. Um, yeah. You know, there's service time, there's office hours, there's you know ministry hours. What what do you suggest here? So in the past, what I've done is we set our office hours Monday through Friday. We're off on Saturday, of course. But then on Sunday, I would always, I usually start the office hours with the first service. And then I let it run through to the end of the last service. It's not the best. I wish there was another way that you could set up multiple service times or something like that in, in Google. You can't really do that. So something I always recommend is that you just have those hours of your service, just very clear and front on your homepage as we talked about previously. I love it. I love it. Love it. Okay. What's thing, next, thing, Kenny? Yeah. The other thing um, that I think I've had um, churches that we're coaching have a little trouble with is, is the description, right? So mm -hmm. there is a business description. Again, this, this is meant for businesses, not for churches or ministries or nonprofits. Right. right? Um, but as an entity, um, I think it needs to be short, descriptive, um, and more importantly, like empathetically tell your purpose, almost as if, and I guess this is just a plug, we're both certified in story brand, so we're kind of brainwashed. We think it should be something that's empathetic and really tells uh, the story from the, the visitor's point of view, not from our point of view, right? So like the, the, the clear example I usually give is, no one cares if we've been around for 176 years, right? right. <laughs> so, Since um, 76, 1766, our church has been doing ministry yes. right here on the corner of this and that. I'm like, nobody cares. Correct. <laughs> um, right. You want it to be an empathetic statement. You want it to really show the, the felt need yeah. of the community or the person that's coming. Um, Story Brand helps you do that with, with a one-liner. Um, you know, that's something that you can reach out to me or Katie to get some help on. Uh, but that, that, this is a description that is going to be shown to people um, in your listings. And so, again, it needs to be something that will catch someone's attention very quickly. And, again, you want to talk about them, not about you. Yeah, who are you? What's your purpose? Yeah. You know, that's, that's what you're trying to answer. But then, more importantly, what can you do for the people? You know, it's, if you're writing copy for the Internet, all it has to be you statements. Like, you belong here this is your home, those kind of things. I wouldn't say welcome home because I feel like that's so no, That's overused and it doesn't mean It's anything. overused and honestly, McDonald's is saying welcome home now and I'm like, McDonald's is never my home. So, <laughs> but you know, something that just says, uh, maybe Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A might be your home. <laughs> hey, Chick-fil-A, I may go Chick-fil-A after this because I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Well, so it is, again, it's um, the, and again, we say around here, it's, it's the with them, the what's in it for me from your visitor's perspective. What is the benefit? What is in it for them? Not mm -hmm. for you, the church. What's in it for them? Um, how can you help them? Um, so yeah. anyway, the, the description is something I think is uh, most people, their gut reaction is to talk about how great they are, how old they are, how established they are. Um, I think it should be more about how we can help you what is the benefit of you coming in and being part of the community? Right. How easy is it for people to find your church online? If someone types in churches near me in Google, does your church come up? You have the power to improve where your church ranks in local search results through local SEO. Local SEO acts like your online arrow pointing people toward your church. The more accurate and effective your local SEO is, Kenny, 
the more visible your church is going to be online to your local community. Yeah, I mean, handling your church's local SEO is not an option today in the digital age, in my opinion, right? So the Google SEO experts over at Mitchell Marketing, we love them. They have developed a checklist. I love the fact that their checklist makes it easy for your church uh, so, to use and improve your local SEO. Uh, they want to offer this tool free to our listeners. We twisted their arm. Um, they're offering it free to everybody here today. All you have to do is go to missionalmarketing.com slash local today. So it's just missionalmarketing.com slash local, and you're going to be able to access this free tool for your church. So it's missionalmarketing.com slash local. See you there. Uh, what else? I think one of the things it's that I do this with Yelp when I go to restaurants, I'm looking for photos. Google My Business allows you to yep. do the same thing, right? Photos. Let's talk about photos, Katie. I want to know what your church looks like and not like just exterior. I think you do need exterior photos of sure. your church so that they can identify it, especially for Google, like for maps. Um, I don't recommend putting tons of exterior photos of your church all over the internet, but I definitely think that in Google My Business, this is very important that people can recognize the building or recognize the location that you're at. But two, I want pictures of what do the people look like yes. that go to your church. So I might be looking for a certain kind of thing. I might be looking for, you know, I want more contemporary or I want more traditional and I want, you know. Smiling I people. Yeah. So show tons and tons of pictures of smiling, happy people who go to your church. Yeah, and not, and not empty worship sanctuaries where there's like one person in every right. row uh please please yes. katie please yes please just put pictures of people you know shaking hands and hugging each other and being in a small group or whatever it doesn't have to necessarily be even on your church's campus could be pictures of you volunteering at the soup kitchen or whatever but there definitely has to be a ton of photos and something else i want to recommend and another kind of trick that we've gotten from another church actually. So Daniel Doak, he's a church communicator in our group. And he told me that something that has helped grow their local SEO, help their Google My Business grow and rank higher is uh, every week he adds new photos to the yep. Google My Business page. So it's not just a one-time deal, one and done. You know, you really should continuously update it. So he adds Every week he has like, I don't know, five pictures from worship or, or five pictures around the campus or whatever. Every week he has new pictures and that helps because Google loves to be on Google. And so they're like, oh, they're playing with us. We're going to play with them. You know what I'm saying? I so love that. I the love, algorithm love prefers that. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, consistent, steady. Google's going to mm -hmm. reward you for that for sure. Right. Um, the last, I think, big idea is that people think these things are like encyclopedias. You put the information there, you print it, and then that's it. That's it for centuries. Um, just like the photo idea of just constantly updating it drip by drip, slowly, slowly. Um, I think posting about your special events is something that we should be doing there too, right? Yeah, they do have an event functionality and they do have like the ability, the ability for you to post to the yeah. Google My Business page. You can also change your hours. Like you, you, if you're closed on Memorial Day, you can tell Google that. So I think we should use the event functionality especially. So if people are looking for your church because you have a special event coming out, maybe it's an Easter egg hunt or something like that, you should definitely create an Easter egg hunt event on Google. That way, it will even show up in Google Maps, right? So you've got Google Maps pulled up on your phone and you're searching for the church because there's an Easter egg hunt coming up. It'll even say Easter egg hunt today from one to four. So do you like click and like, it'll tell you more about the event. So like you can definitely tell even more people about the event just by adding the event to Google as well as, you know, the other places that you advertise it. Definitely, definitely. Um, Let's talk about website optimization, right? So let's zoom out a little bit because you need to um, build your website, but do it in a way that is um, contextually relevant to local SEO, right? So yep. um, let's just rattle down because you can, this, these can be rabbit holes to go down into. Um, yeah. Top level, Katie, what are three things that we should be thinking about um, in terms of optimizing our website in terms of a local SEO perspective? 
name, address, phone number, the nap information again, oh, name, good. address, phone. It needs to be consistent with whatever's in your Google My Business listing. And it needs to be in the footer of your page all over. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then it helps so much, including the zip code. Yes, including zip code. That is important. Um, and then what is this thing called structured data? I've, I've heard a lot of SEO specialists talk about it. It is popping up more and more um, as I um, you know, work with Google My Business with churches. So structured data is like metadata. And honestly, if you're like, I'm not a coder and I have no idea what you're talking about, you can hire someone to do this or you can probably Google it enough yourself. So if you're using Squarespace, there's a way to set up structured data yeah. in Squarespace. If you're using WordPress, you can use Yoast. It's a free plugin. There's like Rank Math, I think now. There's literally so many SEO plugins that can create the structured data for you so that they that the search engines can correctly interpret and associate your information on your website. So structured data also includes images, right? You can tell yeah. what image to be pulled for each page of your website. You know, when it's shared on Facebook, there's an open graph image. Um, an open graph image is set in the SEO data, it's set in metadata. So we have to figure out how, what does our structured data look like and is it telling the right story for us? And you can set up all of that with a plugin. If you're using WordPress, if you're using Squarespace, there's a way to do that. You just Google like Squarespace SEO. Um, and then if you're using other platforms, there's bound to be a way or reach out to the developer that helped you create it. Just because I think it's, yeah, I think it's a really important thing that we use organization schema and, and location schema as, as clearly as possible. Yeah, um, that's great. And then talking about metadata, there's, I think, um, we were talking about this before, there are four places where you should be trying to, and the, the bad or the old term was keyword stuffing. You don't want to keyword stuff. You, you want Google to pick up on certain phrases, but right. you don't want to go overboard. But there are four places that are natural and that you should be thinking about using local keywords on your website. Um, Katie, what are, what are uh, the four different places that we were talking about before? So hold on, let me see. Um, there is your browser title. Okay, so yeah. instead of, okay, so browser title is what shows up in the tab. You know, uh, I think sometimes people think browser title and they're like thinking of something that's actually in the content. Yeah. And I'm like, no, it is like the title slash title in HTML. Okay. So it's what's in the header. And you can set that using, again, a plugin. Yoast SEO can do this. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. But set the browser title to be Christian Community Church in Dallas, Texas, rather than just Christian Community Church. Because, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, because if you're not doing this, you're losing out on the people who are looking for you in Dallas, Texas. Also, it just helps when people are looking at it in their browsers. They're like, okay, I'm looking for five different Christian community churches, which <laughs> is the one in Dallas. And so they're like, oh, that one says Dallas, Texas. All right, I, I found it. You also need to do it on your homepage meta description. So you can set this longer description outside of your browser title that shows up. So when you're on Google, there's a title, there's the URL, and then there's a description. That's a meta description. It will either pull from the first content it finds on the website, or you can set it. And so if you set it, you need to put Christian Community Church is a group of believers located in Dallas, Texas. Perfect. Okay. We love doing these things, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, but it has to be really short. I think it's under 90, 90 characters. So it's, yeah. it's not a long, long statement at all. So if you have to choose between your whole mission statement or your location, choose your location. Okay. And then also you need to set some H1s and H2 tags. So that means a header. So there's headline text, there's an H1 and then there's an H2. You've I'm, got surprised, to set, I'm surprised how many churches don't use don't H2. Set. Yeah, you've got to set it. And that doesn't mean it has to be super large. You can change that in CSS. It, you, I mean, for a very specific module, it doesn't have to be, you know, you've made this H1 the largest thing on your website, because typically that's what it is, is a hierarchy. It's H1, H2, H3. Headlines, they get right? smaller as they go on. But you can kind of finagle it to do what you wouldn't want it to do instead. But you need to make sure you're using H1s and H2s consistently through your website and that one of those H1s has your church's name and probably the location as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, 
And then the last one I think is easy. It's just through the regular content. Make sure that yep. it's, it's logical, it's intuitive. Talk about and include your town name. Or most churches have, include more than one town or one city uh, in their reach. And so the regular text, the copy on your website is the place to somehow feature different city names, different town names, the, the place that you're serving and ministering in. That's the place to do it. So um, it's amazing. I think people try to hire SEO experts. I just had a client who wanted to, um, they were paying $800 for monthly SEO work. But you know what? Mm -hmm. If you just do these four things, get, making sure you get the browser title right, the meta description is right, the, the headline hierarchy, and making sure you're getting some local phrases in there, and then just, just the content of your website. Um, it will do wonders. I think the other one is also metadata for your images. Image, image alt tags for me yeah. um, are powerful because again, no one is tagging their images on your website. Yes. If you take the time to do it, um, you can rise and rank really quickly. Yeah. So this is also really important for accessibility, right? I mean, if yes. blind people are looking at your website or you know visiting your website, then you're going to have to set those alt tags so that they can read them. Yes, absolutely. And it's become increasingly important in, in this day and age. So that, that's great. Um, there's this other category, I guess the last category we could talk about quickly um, is this thing called citation management. It's coming up and more important as data proliferates, websites proliferate, data yeah. sources proliferate. Um, let's talk about a couple things. So can you just give us one tip regarding Facebook and Google My Business, because Facebook sure is where business. everyone's using Facebook today, right? Right, yeah, and the thing is, it, when you set up this Google My Business, make sure it's consistent with what is on your Facebook. They need to match, so there's a Facebook description, there's a, there's a Google description, there's a Google phone number, there's a Facebook phone number, there's an address, there's an address. Just make sure they're the exact same thing. That's the most important thing there, is just to make sure your information is consistent and the same. And yeah, then there's another tip. So there are a lot of online directories, right? So Google is an online directory, essentially. Uh, but there's other ones, right? So there's Yelp and Bing Places and Apple Maps Connect and MapQuest. You've got to claim your listing on all of these. So do that. And then again, make sure your information is correct and that there, that is the same across all of them. And, and, and claim it before somebody else does. Well, what I love about these, these other authority sites, Katie, is that your website might not float to the top, but yeah. a lot of times if you set up your profile well on Yelp or Apple Maps or even like Amazon sometimes uh, for personal um, pages, if you set that well, then um, those pages will rank and then they point back to your website, right? So yeah. your Yelp listing page for your church might rise to the top three in your city, in a city search. Mm -hmm. And so these are powerful to use um, on, on your behalf. Yeah. And then uh, you should just claim other, you know, if there's other online directories, especially in your area, you know, like claim the listings that you possibly can, right? Are you a member of the Chamber of Commerce? Then get listed on the website of the Chamber of Commerce. Are you, you know, in other networking groups? It just, it's important to claim all the citations that you can. Absolutely. Um, again, I think our friends over at uh, Michelin Marketing has put together a checklist. Um, mm -hmm. I've, let's see what, what of is everything the... we've talked about. So if you were like, I was driving and I couldn't take notes and I'm going to listen to this again. Don't worry. We've got you covered. We might have, uh, we could have told people in advance that they don't need to take notes during this podcast. Yeah. Um, but MichelinMarketing.com slash local. Uh, that's the URL. You'll get a handy checklist of all this nerdy, nerdy stuff that you can use to um, share with your team or if you're a webmaster or somebody that's a little bit more technical you if you're not understanding everything here. I hope you appreciate it at the end of the day just how important it is to claim your listing within Google My Business. It just really is important in this day and age. It's an advantage that you can have over so many other organizations and listings on the web. Yeah.
Um, and so I guess that's the tip of the iceberg. We can go on and on about local SEO. Let's Katie, not. Right? We can't. <laughs> what's what's happening next, Kenny? Tell us about what's next. Well, um, I'm excited. So the, we've we originally talked about our homepage and plan your visit. We talked about the importance of local SEO and Google My Business. Um, there is another aspect of SEO I think is important that we really do need to talk about. That's like on page. It's called on page SEO. So instead okay. of like going to Yelp and authority sites and getting links and all that kind of stuff. What are some of the things that we want to do on our website, right? So, uh, again, I think there's a big difference between lo local SEO and on-page SEO. Um, we're going to talk about that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. You know, basically, For sure. we got we we covered a little bit in this episode. We're going to cover a lot more in the next. Yes. So, um, till next time. Uh, hopefully, you'll get the gist that you have so many resources um you know in your pocket if you want to and a lot of them are free like just like the google resources that we went through today um, and we're looking forward to continue the conversation here on the church communications podcast katie i'll check you out there here next time enjoy uh till we meet again see you later people search for a local church online, make sure your church comes up in their search results every single time. You can make sure you're doing everything possible to improve your online visibility like we talked about in this episode with Missional Marketing's local SEO checklist. It's what we use today actually. Download the free checklist by going to missionalmarketing.com slash local. Again, that is missionalmarketing.com slash local. I'll see you there.